Okay, so this are, um, these are examples to help you with your week two assignment, your practice assignment. So these are similar to the ones you're going to have. Okay? All right, so let's read the first one. It says subtract the sum of 51.5 and 2.87 from 68.49. So, see how it says the sum of 51.5? Five and 2.87. As you know, sum means add. So we want to add these two. And you know with decimals, you want to line up the decimal. And so let's put a zero here so that the 7 can go right under that. And we're going to add that. And so 0 plus 7 is 7. 5 plus 8 is 13. So you're going to put the 3 and carry the 1. And so that's 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 is 4. So that is 54.37, 54 and 37 hundredths. And we're going to subtract that from 68 and 49 hundredths. So subtract from goes in reverse order, which means you're going to put the 68.49 first, and then you're going to subtract this sum, 54.37, from 68.49. So it kind of goes in backwards orders than what you want to put, okay? All right, so let's just subtract here. 9 minus 7 is 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. There's your decimal. Four, um, 8 minus 4 is 4. And 6 minus 5 is 1. So your answer is 14.12, or 14 and 12 hundredths. Okay, so that's number one. So remember, subtract from goes backwards. Okay, this one says find 25.7 times 74 plus 26 times 25.7. Okay, so this is order of operations and as you know, multiplications, and we've got the this multiplication here and that multiplication there would go before this addition. Okay, but there's something else going on in this problem you want to be aware of, and that is that we have a common number. You see that? So this 25.7 is the same as this one. So just like the example in, your, um, in the classroom in your website, we can pull out that 25.7. We can just take it out and put a parenthesis and then since we've taken this 25.7 out out here it's going to leave us a 74 see anytime you put a number next to a parenthesis that means multiplication so we're just rewriting this kind of in a shorthand so 25.7 comes out times and then 74 plus 26 you see that there you see how we took out 125.7 that they had in common and then put a parenthesis and then put inside the other two numbers that were not in common that were being multiplied times the 25.7. So now that you've got it rewritten in this way, then you know that your order of operations you know, says to do your parentheses first. So you're going to add 74 plus 26. So let's add that. So 4 plus 6 is 10, carry 1. 1 plus 7, 8 plus 2 is 100. So this is nice because what you've got here is just the number 100. And so you're multiplying 25.7 times 100. So 25.7 times 100. Okay, so that's going to be 0. 0 times all these numbers will be 0. So that takes care of this guy, right? And then you got to put a zero and go to this next number, and that's an, also a zero. So we're going to have just zeros here. Okay, so then we have, now we're in the third row, so we have two zeros here, and then we go one times seven, which is seven. One times five is five, and one times two is two. So then you add all these up, and of course what you're going to get is this number. But you only have one decimal place here, you see? 
So you're going to take your decimal point, which is right here right now, and move it one place to the left. And so your final answer is really going to be 2,570. Okay. Next. Now we're adding some fractions here. We have 1 ninth, add 1 ninth, plus 5 sixths. And as you know, we need a common denominator when we're adding fractions. So we need something that's in the nines table and also in the six table. And if you can't see the common denominator right away, you can start by taking the bigger of the two here, which is nine, and just go down the table. So nine times one is nine. Six, of course, doesn't go into nine. So we gotta go to the next uh, number in the table. And nine times two is 18. And guess what? Six times three is 18. So 18 is, is our least common denominator. So we're gonna put 18 down here on both of these. And now, you gotta change the numerator. So you gotta look at this six and the six. Six times what is 18? Well, it's six times three. So anything you do to the bottom of the fraction, you're gonna do to the top of the fraction. And so five times three is 15. So you change that numerator, okay? Here we have nine. Nine times two is 18. Anything you do to the bottom of the fraction, you're gonna do to the top of the fraction and one times two is two. So now you've got these changed with a common denominator. Now you keep that denominator and you add the numerators or the tops, right? So the two plus 15, which is 17. And this fraction doesn't reduce any further and it's also proper, so we don't have to change to a mix number and we don't have to reduce it or simplify it because it's already simple. So this is your final answer. Okay. Next one, we've got write the following fractions in increasing order, smallest to biggest, and we've got 5 16 so let's write them over here. 3 8 and we have 1 3rd. And of course, the easiest way, or one way, to write these in order is to get a common denominator. So we are going to have to find a common denominator that's in 16, that 16, 8, and 3 all divide into. So remember from before that we're going to look at the multiples of the biggest number, which is 16. So let's see. 8 goes into 16, but 3 doesn't go into 16. So we got to try a different number. So let's go to the next number. 16 times 2 is 32. Again, 8 goes into 32, 8 times 4 but three doesn't go into 32. So we go to the next number, 16 times three, which is 48. Okay, well, eight goes into 48, eight times six, and three goes into 48, three times 16. So 48 is our least common denominator. So we're gonna change all of these to 48. And again, 16 got multiplied times 3 to get a 48, right? So it was the third entry in our table. And so then we have to do that to the top, to the numerator. So this is a 15. Okay, then 8 times 6 is 48. So that we have to do that to the top. 3 times 6 is 18. And then 3 times... 16 is 48, and we have to do that to the top. 1 times 16 is 16. So, to put them in order, this one is the smallest. 15 is smaller than 18 and 16, so this 5 16 is the smallest. Then, the 1 third, which is 16 48, this 1 third is next. And finally, this 1848 is the biggest. Oh, but I should write 3 8 there. Hang on. So we got to change that. So 
That needs to be a 3 eighths. Yeah, go ahead and put the number, the original fractions in your answer, okay? All right, there you go. Those are in increasing order. Cool. Okay, now let's look at this one. This one looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? Express 30 minutes as a fraction of 1 and 1 third hours. So the first thing you should do is you can really do this two ways. You can change the 30 minutes to a fraction or you can change the 1 and 1 third hours to minutes. And uh, so this really up to you. But how about if we do fraction? So 30 minutes, you know that's half an hour. So this is a 1 half hour. And when they want to express it as a fraction of 1 and 1 third hours, that is actually a division problem. You want to take the one half hours and put it over one and one third hours. Okay, but see that's a division. Divide. So let's write this as one half divided by one and one third. Now when you're dividing fractions, first of all, you don't want to mix number. So you're going to change your one and one third to improper fraction and you know that's going to be 3 times 1, just 3 plus 1 or 4 thirds. Okay, so now we have 1 half divided by 4 thirds. And with division of fractions, you're going to do what I like to call flip and multiply. Flip and multiply, which means you take the fraction that's behind the division sign. So that would be this second one, this 4 thirds, and it gets flipped upside down and that's called the reciprocal of the fraction and then this division symbol becomes a multiplication flip and multiply so one half times three over four you see how we flip this guy and we change that to a times okay multiplication and now as you know with fractions you multiply across you don't need a common denominator you just multiply across so 1 times 3 is 3 and 2 times 4 is 8 so what that tells you is that 1 half or 30 minutes is 3 eighths of 1 and 1 third hours so this is your answer 3 eighths that's a little tricky but just rewind this tape and go back and listen to it again, okay? All right, this one says, what is the product? So when you see the word product, that means multiply. So they just want you to multiply seven nines times three fourteenths. And you know that we can multiply with fractions, we can multiply straight across and then simplify. But I like to do something a little bit differently. Um, if you notice that things reduce, that they cancel, then do them before you multiply. What I mean here is that 7 and 14, 7 goes into both of these, right? So we're going to um, divide 7 by 7. That's going to leave us with a 1. And we're going to divide 14 by 7, and that's going to leave us with a 2. So 7 over 14 is a half. 7 is half of 14. So that's why we have 1 and 2 here. Okay, well that's not all because the 3 and the 9 have a 3 in common. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. And so now everything is nice and small. And it's easy to multiply. You just go 1 times 1 is 1 on the top. And 3 times 2 is 6 on the bottom. So 1 sixth. Now, if you multiply it across first and then reduce, you should still get 1 6, but the numbers get so big. So if you can cancel first, I would go for that. Okay, we just got a couple more. This one says, what is the quotient of 12 21s, 12 over 21, and 4 7s? Quotient means divide. So you're going to basically, they want you to take the 12 21 and divide it by the 4 7s. Now this should look familiar. We did a division problem earlier and this is when I told you to flip and multiply. And we always flip the fraction that's, that's to the right of the division. So this guy gets flipped 
and then this symbol gets changed to a multiplication. So this fraction stays the same. So 12 over 21, that stays the same times, and then flip the four sevens upside down. That's the reciprocal. And now we just need to multiply across unless you notice that we could reduce, right? Look at this, this 12 and this 4. 4 goes into both of those, so 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3, so that's cool. And then if you notice that the 7 and the 21 have a 7 in common, then that would be awesome if we got rid of that too. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. And 21 divided by 7 is 3. And so now we've got 3 times 1 which is 3 on the top, and we also have 3 times 1 or 3 on the bottom, so this reduces, this fraction reduces to 1. Okay. Again, if you need to see that again, just rewind and watch why, how we did that. Okay, and finally our last one says convert the fractions 32 fifths to a decimal. So you know that this little bar in a fraction means divide. Okay. The numerator, the numerator is the dividend, dividend, which what that means is that it's going to go inside here. And the denominator is your divisor. So you're dividing by the 5. So the 5 goes out here. Okay, right now, the decimal point is right after the 2. It's not written in there, so it's understood to be there. So I like to put that up here. I like to put that up there to remind myself. And then start dividing 5 into 32. 5 fits 6, six times into 32. And so 6 times 5 is 30. Then we're going to subtract. And then 2 minus 0 is 2, and 3 minus 3 is 0, so 2. And now we're going to bring down another 0 here. And then 5 goes into 20 four times. And now we have no remainder, so we're done. So 32 over 5, 32 fifths as a decimal is 6.4. 6 and 4 tenths. Okay, hopefully that helps. Good luck in today's assignment.